Hello, my name is Dr. Lamb, and I am a faculty member in the Computer Science Department at James Madison University. Uh, and this is a video tutorial about how to connect to the JMU uh, CS student server uh, using passwordless key access uh, and Visual Studio Code. Um, so I'm going to be demonstrating this inside of a Windows virtual machine. So this is their uh, the Microsoft provided um, development image. Uh, but I'm doing this in Windows uh, because uh, the majority of our students have a personal computer that runs Windows, um, and it's also one of the more difficult ones to get going. Uh, if you have Mac OS uh, or Linux on your personal machine, I'll make some notes about things that are different. Um, but in general, the steps are the same. It's just a little bit easier sometimes on, on some of the other operating systems. Uh, and you may notice that uh, the VM is running a little bit slower um, because obviously it's a virtual machine uh, and everything is being emulated. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do as sort of a baseline is just go ahead and connect to Stu uh, using PowerShell and Windows. Uh, and we haven't set anything up, so we'll have to type everything out. Um, but I just wanted to show you how to do that uh, in case you've never done that before. So you open up PowerShell and type in SSH, so that is the command to access stu using the SSH uh, protocol. So um, next you'll want to put in your username. So I have sort of a temporary student username. That's what the S underscore means. Uh, so you won't have that in your name. Uh, and then once you type in your username, type the at symbol. And then we'll need to type out the full path to the, ser the server um, that's uh, out on the internet. It's stu.cs.jmu.edu. And if you type everything in correctly, uh, it should begin to connect to it. If this is the first time that you've connected to Stu from this machine, it will ask you if you want to uh, continue connecting. So we can just type yes. Um, so uh, now it will prompt us for our password, and we can type that in. And there we go. So now we are connected to Stu. And uh, if we had files, we would be able to see them with an ls. Um, but at this point, we're just going to go ahead and connect now that we, or disconnect now that we have verified that everything is working. Um, and so the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and start setting up our passwordless access. And so what we're going to do is create what's called a public private key pair. Uh, so to do that, we'll use SSH keygen. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and generate uh, a pretty secure one. So we're, we'll, uh, rather than the default RSA, we're going to use ED25519, which is a more secure um, protocol uh, or a crypto scheme. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, accept the defaults for all of the prompts. So just press Enter three times, uh, and that will create a public-private key pair. If you want to see them, which I actually recommend uh, doing, you would open up your file explorer, go to your PC. You'll need to go to your home folder. So on Windows, it's uh, in on the main hard drive, and then the users folder, and then your username. Um, so here it's iuser, but whatever your username is will appear here, uh, and then .ssh. So if you're doing this on a different operating system, you'll need to use you know Finder on Mac OS or whatever um, file explorer you have on your Linux distribution. But you're want, going to want to go to your .ssh folder inside of your home folder. And here you'll see the uh, the ed25519 file. So this is the public, or this is the private file, and this is the public file. We're not going to mess with the private file at all. This is what identifies your local machine, the machine that you're running this on, to Stu, uh, and it allows uh, Stu to verify that you are who you say you are. And this is the part that we're going to need to get over to Stu uh, at some point. So let's go ahead and keep this uh, window open, and we'll come back to it in a minute. Um, but for now, we're going to go ahead and create a configuration file. And actually, let's just go ahead and, and use this window. So let's go ahead and create a new uh, text file here. So we'll call this config. Uh, and for now, we'll just let it have the .text because we want it to open in Notepad. Uh, and so in here, we need to put in information about the host. So we're going to give it a shortcut name of stew. The full host name, however, as we saw before, is stu.cs.jmu.edu. And then the user is going to be your EID. Um, and so again, I'm going to use this temporary student uh, user ID here. And then we will save and exit. So this is basically just telling SSH 
that when we SSH to something called stu, we're going to use this full uh, host name and we're going to use this username. All right, and then once we've done that, we want to get rid of the uh, .txt part here. So go ahead and just rename it and get rid of the .txt. It's going to warn you about that, but that's fine. This is what the, the file needs to be. And so we can verify that what we've just done worked by going back to PowerShell and typing in SSH stu. And this is using that shortcut name that we set up in that file. And so if all has gone well, it will prompt us for our password, which we'll still have to type in. Um, so I will go ahead and do that. And once we type in the password, we'll be back into stu. So once we verified that that is now working, so now we have this uh, SSH host set up, um, we'll go ahead and get Visual Studio up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and close PowerShell for, for now. And we'll go to our browser. If you already have VS Code installed, obviously you don't need to do it again. Um, but I'm doing all this from scratch. So we're going to go to code.visualstudio.com. And we'll just download the installer, whatever is appropriate for the operating system that we're using. And we'll go ahead and run the installer. We'll accept the uh, license agreement. Default locations are fine. I would recommend requesting the desktop icon and the two uh, context menu options. This will probably look a little bit different on other operating systems, but uh, choose whatever options are appropriate and then it's going to install the editor. All right, it is now installed, so I'm going to close the uh, browser and go ahead and let it launch Visual Studio Code. The first time that you run Visual Studio Code, uh, it's going to uh, ask you to do some setup stuff, uh, and you should do that at some point, but for now, um, let's just go ahead and open the extensions tab and search for remote SSH. And so this is the name of the extension that we want to install, so make sure that that matches, and then click the install button. And this will install the uh, functionality that will allow us to connect to Stu from within Visual Studio Code rather than from uh, PowerShell. All right, once we have that installed, we can close that window and the extensions tab, and we're going to use the show all commands uh, key shortcut here, uh, control shift P, and we'll start typing remote SSH, and uh, at some point you'll see the connect to host option appear, and so we'll go ahead and connect, click that. Since we already set up an SSH host, we can just click on the host that we created earlier, so the shortcut stew and it will begin connecting to Stu, and you'll notice that it opened a new window uh, in order to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close the old window so that we don't have too much going on here. It's going to ask us for the platform of the remote host that we're connecting to, so we know that that's a Linux machine, so you go ahead and choose Linux. And it's going to ask for our password, because again we haven't set up the passwordless access yet, so we'll go ahead and type in our password and you'll notice down here in the lower left that it is currently opening the remote server. All right, and now it has connected, so you can see that we are connected uh, via SSH to Stu, and we can get rid of that. Uh, and so uh, at this point, we need to get this public key file uh, over to a particular location on Stu. So let's go ahead and open our home folder. So if we just click open folder in Visual Studio Code, this is our home folder by default, so we can just press enter. And uh, it's going to open our, our accounts home folder in the file explorer. Uh, and it is asking for the password again. At some point, it might ask you if you trust the authors of the files in this folder. Uh, and so you go ahead and click, yes, I trust the authors. And then these are the files in your uh, home folder. 
you'll notice that it has created a folder called VS Code Server and installed some stuff in there. So that's what's enabling the Visual Studio code that's running on this machine to connect to uh, the uh, corresponding uh, server on the uh, Stu machine. So the thing that we need to do at this point is create a, an SSH folder uh, and an authorized keys file. Now, if you've done some stuff on Stu before, you might already have a folder. So look up here and make sure that you don't already have a .ssh folder. Um, but if you don't, then right click and say new folder, and we're going to name it .ssh. So the dot is, is very important, so make sure that that's there. And then once we have that created, we are going to create a new file called authorized keys. And make sure that you spell that right. Again, if you have this file already, uh, just go ahead and open it, uh, and we'll add the key to the end rather than creating a new file. So at this point, I am going to open both of these windows. So I'm going to uh, let Visual Studio have the left side of the screen, and I'm going to have uh, this on the right side of my screen. So uh, this is the local machine, or this is the remote machine actually, uh, and this is the local machine. So I'm going to go ahead and open the public key file with code. And uh, now we have two Visual Studio code windows open. And again, the one here on the right is the local uh, file. So you can see over here that we're on the Windows machine. And over here, we're on the uh, we're on Stu. So you can always look down at the lower left if you're confused about whether you're working on the remote server on Stu or if you're working on your local machine. So we're on the local machine here and the remote machine here. So basically, what we want to do is make this machine aware of this uh, this key file. And in order to do that, we're just going to copy the contents of this .pub file into the authorized key file. Again, if you have other authorized keys already in there, you'll want to just add this as a new line at the end of the file. And then we'll go ahead and save, so that's Control S on Windows. And at that point, now we should be able to connect without using a password. So let's go ahead and close everything out and start from scratch here so that we can verify that this is working. So let's do this in PowerShell first. So uh, I'll open PowerShell and um, type in SSH stew. And if all goes well, it should connect and we shouldn't have to type in our password. In Visual Studio Code, It's already opening uh, the remote stew, uh, and you'll notice that it is not asking us for our password. But it went ahead and connected anyway. And if we wanted to verify that all this was working, we could click down here and close the remote connection. And so now we're back to working locally. If we wanted to get to stew again, we could click there and say connect to host, stu, and as you can see, it's connecting without uh, asking me for a password. Okay, so a couple of other things that I want to point out here is that uh, anytime that you're working on a remote uh, server, there's the opportunity that you might have your connection interrupted. So this is particularly common if you're working on a wireless network, uh, going from one wireless receiver to another as you walk across campus, for instance, can terminate your connection. Uh, so I'm going to sort of simulate this because I'm running this inside of a virtual machine. So I'm going to start uh, editing a file. So I'm going to open up my home folder here. And I'm just going to start editing one of these files. So I'm just going to choose this dot profile file uh, and so I'm going to I have some text in here from before when I was uh, experimenting here so I'm just going to start typing here um, and I'm going to uh, pull the plug on my virtual machine so at this point I have disconnected the network uh, and so I'm, I'm not physically connected anymore although there's not really much that has changed here visually to indicate that that's happened um, some of the things that you might notice 
uh, is that you go to save and you'll, you'll notice here, right, the little circle indicates that I haven't saved yet. Typically when I press control S, that would uh, go away, but it's not happening. I'm pressing control S right now and it's not saving. Another indicator that something has gone wrong is that I've clicked, I can click on a different file and it's, it's not loading. Uh, at some point you may get a message down here that says that it's reconnecting. You might get a pop-up that says that it's reconnecting. Um, but basically at this point we're disconnected. And so if this ever happens and you're worried about losing um, some work that you've done, so you can see now that it's, it's, um, it's attempting to reconnect. If you're ever worried about losing work, you can always take the text that you've worked on and copy it and then open a new window. And notice that this new window is local, so we're not connected to, to anything remote. And so we can create a new temporary file, uh, and we could even save this locally on our machine if we wanted, um, just to make sure that we don't lose anything because of the, the disconnection to Stu. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and re-enable my connect, or my connection, and uh, it's already, it's sort of timed out, so now I have to reload the window. And now that the connection has been reestablished. I can reconnect. And so um, you'll notice that it, it kept my unsaved changes here. Um, but if it hadn't, I could go and, and get those from that, that other uh, file if I, had, if I had saved that. So one other thing um, that you should uh, think about when you are working on a remote server is making sure that you're a good neighbor and that you're not um, leaving uh, processes running that are uh, taking up CPU time for other people. So one thing that you can do is open up the terminal. So I just pressed control tilde, um, but you can also use uh, terminal in the view menu. And this essentially opens a shell connection to Stu from VS Code. So I could, I could have done this in PowerShell, but um, you can also just do it from within uh, VS Code. So this, this works just like um, using PowerShell. Uh, and one command that I can run is uh, called top, and I want to specifically look at the things that are running as me. So top-u, and then uh, you'll type in your username. I'm using this, this uh, temporary student username. And this is going to show all of the processes that I currently have running on Stu. And so this lets you kind of keep tabs on what you are currently running um, and it's going to sort by the processes that are using the most percentage of the CPU. So you see the percent CPU column right here. Um, and so I can see that I have a node process. Um, so Visual Studio Code is, uh, is implemented uh, on top of Node.js. And so we can see that this is Visual Studio. And it's using about you know, 1 or 2% of a CPU, just kind of idling in the background. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, but if you notice that you have processes that are using a lot of CPU, um, it's probably a runaway process, and it's probably something that you need to terminate. Uh, and so take note of the process ID. That's this first column here. So just write down the number, and then press Q to exit top, and then use the kill command uh, to kill that process. And you need to use that, that PID. So you could also uh, copy-paste. I, I, you can also copy-paste. Okay, um, but I'm not going to do that right now because that's probably going to kill the editor window that I'm that I'm using, and I don't want to do that. Um, but again, just keep an eye on your Stu usage um, and uh, make sure that you kill anything that is using a lot of CPU that you're not actively using. All right, so I think that that uh, wraps up this tutorial, um, and there will be a separate one about how to uh, work with the 261 projects using this setup. Um, but for now, I just want to leave you with a couple of uh, hints about how to get help. Uh, so first of all, I'll point out that we have uh, a wiki website for the computer science department. So this is wiki.cs.gnu.edu. Uh, and so if you connect to that website and then scroll down to the current students area, under university department specific resources, there is a whole section about the student server that we connected to just now. Uh, and so if you click on that, that'll take you to that 
portion of the wiki, and you can see there are two main uh, parts. There's you know, the basics of how to use Stu, uh, and then there is uh, a section about how to be a good citizen on Stu. So I recommend reading all of this uh, and um, taking advantage of all of that. Uh, the other resource that you have is the uh, Unix users group. So jmunixusers.org. Uh, so the Unix users group is a uh, club uh, that uh, is comprised of computer science majors, but also IT majors and other uh, people from other majors across the university. It's people who are uh, interested in using Linux and other Unix-based operating systems. Uh, and we do, uh, I'm a co-advisor for the club, and we do a lot of tutorials. Uh, and so if you end up running into any problems with any of the stuff that we did in this video, or if you want to learn more about how to use the command line more effectively, uh, I recommend coming to uh, some of the UUG tutorials. All right, and with that, uh, that is the end of what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, so good luck.